uh, something that every parent should make a top priority. You can't believe how sad it is to run into these parents who find two or three years later that their child has been eating lead-based paint for that period of time. Now, there are two key actions that every parent will want to take. First, you want to find out whether or not there is any lead paint in your home. If your home was built before 1973, you could have lead paint in it. Before 1953, you could have the most toxic kind of lead paint. Don't be fooled by restoration because you could, of course, have painted two or three layers over the lead paint and it could still be there. The second key action to take is to have your child tested early and often. How do you screen for the poisoning if you think your child has, in fact, been exposed to lead poisoning? There's a simple test. That test should be done on every single child. There are physicians who will say, gee, you're at low risk or you don't need it. That's thought to be old-fashioned. Just because you're in a middle-class neighborhood doesn't mean you don't need to be tested. Now, in terms of the testing, there is an old guideline, which is the American Academy of Pediatrics. And that guideline says that you should be tested twice at age nine months and before you go to school. This guideline is outdated. There's a second guideline. It is that for the Centers of Disease Control and that says that you should be tested before the age of one and then every single year until the age of six. Now, if you're confused by those two guidelines, the last one you saw basically being tested every year from the age of one to six is the one you should stick by because the American Academy of Pediatrics is going to revise theirs by the end of the year. And you'll remember from yesterday's piece, of course, that these children basically were picking up at age two or three or four, so they would have been missed if they were just tested at the age of one. How do they do the tests and how expensive are they? It's a simple blood test and it should only cost 10 to 15 dollars. There are those that will charge 60 to 70 dollars. They're charging you that, you're being cheated. Okay, so you've had this test, you fork out the money to do it, you find out that the levels of lead in your child's blood are too high, then what do you do? If they are less than 40, you're going to first of all want to find out where the source of the lead is. Now most likely it's going to be lead-based paint. It could also be lead-based paint that's on an imported toy. There are, however, other sources. It can be the soldering, the lead soldering, either in cans or in piping. The second thing you want to do, of course, is remove that from the child's environment. Third, you can give them the diet that will decrease the amount of lead in their system. That consists of zinc, iron, calcium, and protein. And the last thing you want to do is to make certain that these lead levels are coming down. You really found the source, and you're getting rid of the problem. Now, 40 seems to be the magic number. What happens if your child's level is higher than 40? If your child's lever, level is higher than 40, you're going to have to have uh, chelation therapy. That's often done inpatient in a hospital over the course of a week, and that will draw the lead out of the child's system. It will draw it out of blood and out of bone, but not out of brain. In the brain, the damage has already been done. It can also be done as an outpatient basis uh, if it's uh, too expensive to hospitalize your child, uh, but that can be very painful. Bottom line here, though, is lead is a very big problem. It can affect every child, and every single child needs to be tested, and every child's play, home, and school environment needs to be tested. Thanks for the warning, Bob.